Let's continue our discussion of linear algebra and let's start with a very interesting example. So let's start by looking at a straight line. Let's look at y equals 2x. So let's go ahead and graph this line in the xy plane. So this here is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So this is x and this is y. So when you plug in 0, you get 0. So you're right here at the origin. And when you plug in 1, um, you're up at 2, right? Because if x is equal to 1, um, you end up with y equals uh, 2 times 1, which, which is equal to 2. So that puts you here, OK? Uh, and then you just keep doing that, and you get a bunch of dots. And so you get this beautiful line. So you'll notice uh, that the vector uh, 1, 2 is right here. Let me draw it in a different color. So this, this point here is 1, 2. This would be the terminal point of the vector uh, 1, 2. Okay, so, so the vector 1, 2 is on the line. So this line contains the vector uh, 1, 2. You can think of it as uh, containing the vector. So again, you can think of y equals 2x, you know, can put it in quotes, contains uh, the vector the vector 1, 2, right? So 1, 2. Uh, you'll notice, um, yeah, so it contains the vector 1, 2. Uh, another thing to notice uh, is if you multiply this vector by 2, so, so like if I put a, if I put a 2 here, uh, so I would get 2, 4, okay? So if I could do that, right, if I could multiply each entry by 2, I would get 2, 4. That would be right here and then right here. So it maybe be here. So this is the point 2, 4, okay, and let me use a different color now. Um, so this purple line would be the vector 2, 4. So it's twice the distance, right? So 2, 4 is twice this vector. So if I multiply this by, let's say, alpha, I would get alpha 2 alpha. That's alpha times the distance. So it's like alpha times away uh, from the origin. So so multiplying this by a number, multiplying this vector by a number makes it that much farther away. Multiplying it by 3 would put us up here, by 4 would put us up here, etc. So this leads to uh, some interesting thoughts, right? So you could think of this set here, V, the set of vectors uh, alpha to alpha. So if you graph all of these vectors where alpha is a real number, you would basically get the graph of the line, right? You would get the graph of the line. So um, you can think of the graph of the line y equals 2x as the graph of uh, this set of vectors, which is uh, kind of interesting. So this idea of multiplying a vector by a number, it's called scalar multiplication. Let's, let's go ahead and define it. So definition, definition. So given, given a vector x in Rn, so given x equals, let's say, uh, x1 dot 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 xn and uh, alpha in R, okay, then we define alpha x, the new vector, and what we do is we basically multiply each of the components by alpha. So alpha x1 dot 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 alpha xn, right? And we call this the scalar product, and this is um, you know, called scalar multiplication. So this operation is called scalar multiplication. Multiplication. Uh, a scalar is a number from a field. Typically, the field is the real numbers, the complex numbers. So um, for our purposes, we'll typically have uh, real numbers, right, real numbers. Um, there's a couple properties uh, for scalar multiplication. The first one uh, is closure, so properties. So uh, closure for a scalar multiplication, so closure. And this is for scalar multiplication. Last time it was for vector addition. It's basically saying um, that for any real number alpha and any vector x in Rn, we have a new vector, right, which also exists in Rn. So the vector alpha x 
also belongs uh, to Rn. So kind of obvious from the definition, but uh, it's worth giving it a name. So um, vectors are closed under the operation of scalar multiplication. So rather, um, yeah. So a real number times a vector is always a vector. So closure under scalar multiplication. There's a commutative property for scalar multiplication as well. Uh, so com commutivity. Commu I'll just spell commutative. <laughs> commutative property. The commutative property just says um, that scalar multiplication actually commutes. So for alpha in the set of real numbers and for a vector x in Rn, we have alpha x equal to x alpha, right? And that's always true. That's always true. Uh, we have a couple more, a couple more. Uh, three, uh, the distributive properties. So distributive property. The distributive property basically says um, if you have two constants, so uh, for okay, so for alpha and beta in um, the set of real numbers, okay, and x, y vectors. then if you have um, alpha plus beta times the vector x, okay, that's just alpha x plus beta x, okay? And if you have alpha x plus alpha y, that's alpha x plus y. So um, it distributes very, very nicely, right? Just like a, a real number uh, would. Then we have four, which was called uh, uh, mixed associativity. So mixed, or the mixed associative property. Kind of a, a strange, strange property, mixed associative property. Not something that people often talk about. Um, this basically says that uh, for, I mean, it's, people almost take it as common sense. So for alpha, beta, and the set of real numbers, and a vector x in Rn, I mean, this, this is sometimes useful. If you have alpha times beta x, this is equal to alpha, beta, x. Right? So you can do that. And the last one uh, is that you have a multiplicative identity in the world of vectors. So for x in Rn, um, if you take um, 1, the number 1 times the vector x, um, you get the vector uh, x, right? You get the vector x. So um, that's it for now. In the next video, we'll continue with uh, another example.